So I've come up with an idea for an image short that I want to create. And to do that, I want to use Blender to create the backgrounds. I'm going to use Toon Boom Harmony to animate the 2D characters. And then I want to use DaVinci Resolve to composite everything together. Now I chose Blender for the backgrounds because if I do a camera move, I don't want to have to recreate and redraw the backgrounds every single time. And I think Blender Grease Pencil really helps you get a 2D animated feel without having to redo that. But I kind of researched some of the animated shows I like watching, like Bob's Burgers, Rick and Morty, Hilda, or um, Inside Job. And I noticed their backgrounds, the line work is kind of wavy. It's got some noise in it. The lines don't always connect. So I wanted to imitate that style in Blender using Blender Grease Pencil. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of the uh, examples that I looked at in order to create this style. And then I'll walk you through the process of doing that yourself. It's actually really easy to get a kind of 2D look on a 3D model uh, without it looking so perfect using Blender and some of the modifiers for Blender Grease Pencil. So if you found this video helpful, if so, please like and subscribe and let's get started. So here I'm in Blender and you can see my scene that I created and the background is all 3D. So if I scroll around, you can see what that looks like. So Bob, I drew him in Toon Boom Harmony and then exported him as a PNG and then added him to Blender as a image plane. Now again, I just created this scene to experiment with this style to get it the way I want it. And then I will use this style on the backgrounds I'll be creating for my original animation. So if I were going to use this exact scene, I would probably export a render of the front counter, export a separate render of the background, and then I would put Bob in between those two within DaVinci Resolve. So I just want to show you this is 3D. So I want to go into a new scene file that just has this sign and the electrical outlets, and then I'll show you how to build the line work for this. So the reason I created this style was because I wanted to mimic some of the backgrounds from shows I like. So I want to give you some examples real quick. So here I have the Bob's Burger background that I was using for my inspiration. And you can see it looks almost the same. So let me click back in here. That's what mine looks like. There's the camera view. And then there's that one. So again, that one, and then that one. So I was able to get it pretty close. Now what I want to show you is, especially the sign here, if I zoom in, you can see how wavy this line is right here and you can see that it has breaks in the line work. So here's a background from Hilda and again you can see like right here the lines are breaking. You can see that the lines aren't perfect, that it gives it a very natural hand-drawn feel. So here's one from Rick and Morty. And again, like if you look at the curtains, you can see the lines have breaks in them. They're kind of wavy. They're not perfect. And it's just like subtle. Like if you look around here on the door uh, outline, it kind of is a little bit wavy and imperfect. And then here's a background from Inside Job, which I will never forgive Netflix for canceling. If you look at it, it's probably the most imperfect of the bunch. You can see some of the lines are thicker than others. They look like they cross and overshoot and they're broken and very imperfect. So that's kind of what I wanted to achieve in Blender Grease Pencil. So here's the scene we'll be working with so I can show you this technique. And this is just the electrical outlet with some of the wires, the sign, and then there is a background, which is the room in order to give us something to look at and for the shadows to project onto. So if we look at the outliner over here, you can see I only have a camera, a sun, and then a collection that includes all of my models. And if I click on that, you can see I have Several of those, all names, so they're easy to find. I'm going to close that up. We also have the room, which is just to give us a background for the shadows to project against. So if I click on the camera, I really didn't change much here. You can see that it's at 35 millimeter focal length. I did adjust that a bit, and then everything else I kind of left the same. So that shouldn't affect anything if you're following along. If I click on my light, you can see that I have sun selected. And I kept my strength extremely low. The only reason I want the light here is to create the shadows. And you can see those like right around the sign and the electrical wires. Aside from that, I really didn't change anything else. The color is just straight white. And then in my collection, I'm going to click on one of these. And you can see my material. Now, if you can't see the shader editor, you just click on this drop down, choose shader editor. And that's how you can see your material nodes. I really only changed the base color and I left everything else the same. 
But to get that 2D look, everything is gonna happen via grease pencil. So to add those 2D lines, make sure you're in object mode. Click Shift A on your keyboard to bring up the Add menu. Choose Grease Pencil, Blank. Okay, you can see nothing's happened now, but if I look over here, I think it added it to my collection. Yeah, so I'm gonna click and drag to bring that out because I want it outside the collection. I'm gonna close up the collection and drag this into my top collection with my camera and my son. Now, if I click on it and go down to the Grease Pencil Data tab, you can see I have automatically created a Grease Pencil layer and I don't need anything more than that. And if I click on the Materials tab, you can see it created a material for me, black.002. It would normally just be black, but I've had instances of this already, so it's created a new one. And if you look down here, I have Stroke Enabled, which is the default, and then Fill Disabled, which is what I want. So I want a solid stroke, no fill, and then the base color solid black. Now I'll we'll go up here to the modifiers tab within that grease pencil object. I wanna click add modifier, line art. Oh, by the way, if you're looking at the viewport, I'm using the rendered viewport so we can see all this live. So in the under line art, you can choose what is affected by this. You can choose a collection, an object, or a scene. So for me, the easiest way to organize this is through collections. That's why I have all of my sign and electrical stuff in the burger sign collection. So from here, I can just use collection as my source type, click on collection, and choose that collection. So next I'm gonna click on layer, and that's GP layer. And again, this is the same that you see here under the data properties. For material, I wanna choose the black 0 .002, and now you can see our lines are added. Now obviously that's way too thick, so I'm gonna click in here and change that to six. I click off of it so you can see it. So now you can see if you just wanted simple line work, that's all you need to do to get it. And if I scroll around, you can see what that looks like. Now the lines that are created are based on your camera. So if I was going to move the camera, the lines would change to follow the camera. So that's just something to keep in mind if you kind of scroll around the viewport and you think something should have lines on it and it doesn't, it could be because it's not within the path of the camera. Now this isn't too bad if you wanted something simple, but it's lacking that 2D imperfections I was talking about. But first, before I add anything else, I wanna go over the edge types. These are what's automatically added when you add a grease pencil object. Contour, you can choose a couple of options here, silhouette and individual silhouette. I've only ever used contour and I'm gonna keep that checked because that creates the line around the edge of your art. So you can see that here. And that's gonna be the bulk of where your line work comes from. The next one is crease and that just depends on the creases in the model. So if you see me click and drag here, I start to lose one of my lines. But I wanna keep that line, so I wanna keep crease on and you see if I go all the way up to 180, it starts adding some other ones. So you probably need to play with this to see how it affects your scene. I'm gonna leave it at 120. Intersections creates lines when two objects intersect. So it would be like where these come together. So I'm not gonna use material borders for this one, but that would be creating lines where two different materials are bordering each other. But I don't really need that because I have intersections on. Now edge mark is where you tell Blender where you absolutely want line work to show up. And I'll show an example of that in a minute. And then loose creates lines where a polygon does not exist. Like if you took a polygon and deleted one of the edges, you would still have three edges, but they're not completing a polygon, then that would show up as line work. And the other two, light contour and cast shadow, I won't cover in this one. So that's all you need to do to create your line art. As far as edge marks go, I'm going to click into this electrical box. And I wanna to go to edit mode. So say I wanted some of these lines right here to show up and have lines added to them. If I go to edge mode up here and I select one, I'm gonna turn off my gizmo so you can see this. So you see I got that selected white. I wanna click another one and click another one by holding shift. Now I've got three selected. If I right click on those, I can go and choose Mark Freestyle Edge. You see they turn green. Now we hit Tab to go back to Object Mode, and now you can see we have line work on those. So that's what edge marks are. And I use them the most except for contour because I get to go in and actually define everything I want to define with edge marks, so I'm sure that line work will be showed up where I want it to be. So I'm gonna click Undo, 
So I've deselected though, tab to go back into object mode, zero on my numpad to go to camera view. Okay, so now we've got our line work, but I want this a little more random looking. So for that, I am going to go to Grease Pencil Object. I've got my line art modifier. I'm gonna click Add Modifier, and I'm gonna click Noise. Now you can see that immediately changes things, but this is way too chaotic for what I want. So I need to dial this in a little bit. So you see we have position at 0.5. That's way too much. Gonna to click in here and type in 0 0.03. And you'll have to play with these values for your specific scene. So for me, I know I want the strength at 0.1. And you can watch in the viewport as this changes. I'm gonna click undo and you can see what that did. Then I'm gonna to go to thickness and type in 0.5. I don't have UVs in this scene, so that's off. I don't need anything to that. I'm gonna change my noise scale to 0.245. Now you can see it really changed it then. So if I scroll out, click off so you can see it. Now we really have it, you know, wavy and imperfect looking. And I'm gonna change my offset to 10. And then seed kind of randomizes this. So currently it's on one. You can see if I click and scroll across that one, it'll increase the number and you can watch the sign lines change as I do that. So that's all the changes we need to this. And if I click off the sign, you can see what that looks like so far. I'm gonna click back on Grease Pencil Object. Now the last thing I wanna change is the length. So if I click on add modifier and go to length, you can see how that changes everything and those aren't the values we want. But if the start value is a positive number, that means it's gonna be an overshoot of the line. So if I click and drag, you can see those lines kind of disappearing. So on my artwork, if you were gonna have lines overshoot, that may be something you want, but I don't, I just want the lines to not always be complete. So I'm gonna click zero in there. And now on the end, if I make that a negative, you can see some of the lines start to disappear. But if I do that and I scroll in and look, you can see those lines are disappearing almost right next to each other. And that looks too uniform for me. So what I'm gonna do is change end to zero. And you see now everything's back to normal. And I go to random offset. This will do what I just showed you with breaking the lines up, but then the endpoints won't be the same, so that'll look a little more random. So for my settings, I'm gonna leave the start at zero. I'm gonna change the random offset end to minus 0 0.05. You can see how that immediately made some changes. I'm gonna leave noise offset to zero, and then I'm going to change the seed and you can watch and see how that really changes things. And we'll find one I like. Okay, I think that one looks good. If I click off of this, you can see now I have a broken line here. These two are broken, but they're not uniform with each other. I've got a few broken lines around the words. So if I scroll out, you can see what that looks like. So I've got my wavy line. I've got it a little bit transparent. The uh, lines are broken, and I think it, that gives me a nice 2D effect. If I scroll in here, you can see those are broken. You can see how jagged and messy they look, which is what I was going for. So I do want to tell you one example about noise that you're going to run into. So if I click Shift A to bring up a mesh, I want to use plane and change the Y to 90. It's currently within my models collection, so I know the line work will affect it. So I'm gonna grab that, turn on my gizmos, and I'm gonna bring it over here to the wall. I'm gonna hit G and bring that up. Okay, I'm gonna zero to my numpad to go to camera view. Okay, now I'm gonna hit Shift D to duplicate that and bring this over in the Y. Now, the first one I wanna change the name to low res. Second one, I want to change the name to high res. Now you see currently, we're not seeing a lot of imperfections in this. So I'm gonna click on the high res and hit tab to go into edit mode. 
Now we don't currently have any vertexes on this except the corners. So I wanna click select and grab all of this and right click and hit subdivide, subdivide again, 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 again. So now we have a lot more geometry with this than the other one. So I wanna click out of this to object mode and now you can see how much wavier this is and how much imperfections there are. So just keep that in mind. If you have a noise modifier and you're not getting the effect you want, you may need to add geometry to your object. Now, that can create other problems like lag in the viewport or longer render times, but if you want that kind of wavy look, you're gonna have to add geometry to the model to get that. So if you're looking to get a 2D look on objects for like environments and backgrounds and things like that, uh, you should consider this process. I found it easy and it gives me a nice rough look that's not as perfect as you would expect in CG. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions about this process, leave them in the comments below and I'll address what I can. And if you'd like to see other things like this, let me know and I'll see if I can make videos about it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.